Oh shit. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Oh my god, get the fairy. Yes, okay. YouTube. <laughs> What's going on? It's your boy Buddha back in the building excited because I've been waiting to do this video. I've been wanting to for a minute for a while and finally I have the chance to do this. With the release of Shift Lilibet that came just a little while ago came the free to play character. Uh, very dope free-to-play character, Zlorg, or Hentacle a lot of people call him. Uh, he's a dope unit that you can get completely for free in the game, which is really awesome. Adis got it. Um, and it, it requires a lot of steps and a lot of very particular things before you get the opportunity to not only get him, but also get Zlorg's sword. Uh, sword of the Lost Souls, I believe it's called, which is... I think hands down one of the best swords if not weapons in the entire game because of the stat boosts it gives and its effects. So I wanted to make a nice complete guide uh, along my journey of acquiring those two things on how exactly to do so. Yo! Future Buddha here uh, coming at you because when I originally recorded this video I did not realize that you need to have beaten the entire story up until the current point in particular that is chapter 6-5 in name and blood needs to be done and completed in order to take on the quest that's going to yield you the free-to-play characters lord and his sword all right back to the video so you just saw me get the last fairy that i needed because yes this entire process starts with capturing the fairies which is a feature in the game that you unlock pretty early on in the story. Um, you unlock a node called the Fairies Lab, which we'll take a look at later. So in order to start your journey collecting these fairies, there are eight individual fairies that need to be gathered first in very specific nodes on the map. When you find these nodes or unlock these modes, which they'll all be available to you after you get to Samuel Village, which as you can see is chapter 4-14. One of the nodes in particular is Ghost Ship Legness here, uh, in which you're, you'll click the node, you can pick any of these stages within that node. It is, uh, these, the fairies are not exclusive to individual stages, as long as you're taking on one of these stages in the uh, specified node. So let's say I'm gonna take on this first stage. Now very important, uh, the way you set up your team, as you can see, this is who I've been using. Nero with no arcs and no support. That's going to be super important because you're going to be relying on getting that fairy in the first wave. I'm going to show you exactly uh, what the process is going to look like. So we're going to start the quest here. And the reason you bring no arcs is because we're going to be entering and quitting very often the wave starts we're gonna literally run around and avoid enemies for 10 seconds and i'm saying i will literally run around when i was doing this and i would count in my head 210 i realize oh there's no fairies here you go ahead exit out here and hit that retire button and then just keep repeating that process again let 10 seconds pass if the fairy doesn't show up you just want to rinse and repeat this process. Now, a pro tip for any newbies that I actually didn't figure out until halfway through my fairy grinding. Uh, make sure the first thing you do when you start this, go into the settings right here and take off auto attack. Auto attack is going to be checked like this. Take that off. It's going to make your life so much easier because capturing the fairy does require a manual tap. You got to tap the fairy right in the exact location and then you'll see the little animation uh, of it kind of circling your body and entering your character. Now, I had a very frustrating incident where as soon as I let go of the movement stick to tap the fairy, my character auto attacked, killed all of the enemies. And if you don't get the fairy in that first go around, 
it's gone. So then you have to start all over as if the fairy never even showed up in the first place. And to my knowledge, sources, I, certain sources I've heard from uh, do claim that these fairies have a 5% appearance rate. So it is rare. Some of these might take you forever to find. You might think, what the heck? I know the fire fairy literally took me days to farm just because I didn't have the patience to sit there and grind it out, but it would just not show up for me. So be prepared to be patient. Another very important thing is make sure you bring a unit that can clear the stage once you have acquired the fairy. Uh, you do have to finish the stage once you capture the fairy. So don't be taking on any like hard or god mode stages that may kill your character off because then you'll just have to start trying to find the fairy all over again. Like I mentioned before, there are eight fairies all pertaining to a particular element. Uh, and the first one that you're going to be looking for is here towards the beginning of the story at Rubel or Rubel Coastline. This is going to be your wind fairy that you pick up. And I should mention just gathering these fairies individually will give you a uh, nice, some decent pieces of equipment, some better than others, which I'll go over in a different video at some point, but just something to note along the way. The water fairy you're going to find here at the sky ship wreckage just under the Rubel coastline and the fire fairy right under that as well, all very close to each other at the Malboria lava caves. Like I was saying, this fairy took me forever to find. That's why when you see a fairy spawn, make sure you get it because if it disappears or you either miss it, you're going to get very frustrated starting the process all over again. The fourth fairy being the Ice Fairy is going to be found in the Lanzalia Mountains. Looking at Kyle's home island, the Medra Forest is where you're going to find the Forest Fairy. The Caldina Ruins is going to house the Light Fairy that you want to get. The Gourd Mines is where you're going to obtain the Earth Fairy, which actually gives you arguably the best uh, piece of equipment given by capturing all these fairies. Uh, really good for any farming unit. And last but not least, Ghost Ship Legnus, as you saw before, is where you get the Dark Fairy. Now, I kind of took this off center so you could see that you unlock that node by Samuel Village. And some of the new players might be saying, uh, where is that node and why don't I have it? Well, funny enough, I don't know how you would know this without talking to someone who did this before you because that's how I found out. Apparently, 10 minutes after every hour, Okay, so if it's 12, you got from 12 to 12.10. To unlock this node, you're going to see a bunch of thunderclouds and a very tiny little floating pirate ship within the area that Ghost Ship Legnus is sitting. Tap that little pirate ship and boom, it's just going to unlock and spawn. Then you don't have to worry about uh, spawn times. It's open and available uh, indefinitely from that point. But wanted to throw that in in case anyone's like, yo, bro, I don't have that node because <laughs> that's exactly what I said. Now, once you get your fairy, whether it's your first or your last, you want to make sure you've secured the bag. And you're going to be doing that by going all the way across the map and finding the fairy lab right here, which you're going to unlock, unlock like I said, relatively early around the time you get to Blaze Garden right up there. Tap that node. Uh, it should be one of those little sparkly tabs that you can tap on the map and the node will pop up. And you can see I've got seven out of eight. And once you get your fairy, you're going to see this icon change and have this put text right above the cage. We'll go ahead and do that. The fairy's going to go into its place and boom, you get the piece of equipment corresponding with that fairy. Some nice equipment, so make sure to check them out in case you can utilize them on any characters that are lacking equipment. So there we go. All eight fairies are in. It looks like we're going to experience this cutscene, which I have not yet seen. I'm assuming this is Lorg. It's not as if I'm going to eat them. Foreshadowing much? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, those fairies know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, his, his name is Lorg the Devourer for a reason. Oh, he's going to give you something. That's right. You do get this item as well, which is a very... Very nice six-star accessory. Crown of the Ace. Reduce MP cost of all magic by one. Reduce fire, ice, earth, and thunder damage received. Very, very, very useful piece of equipment right there. So I'm happy to pick that up. That's actually probably going to look great on Zlorg once you obtain him. 
like I said in the beginning of the video, you need to get to this node, uh, this part in the story, chapter 5-7, uh, so that you can see I circled, there is a chess node right there. You can't really see it very well, but that's going to be the vicinity in which you obtain chest number 38, treasure chest number 38. That chest is going to give you this item right here, the genie lamp, which to my knowledge is part of the process in unlocking the subquest to take on Zlorg, the Devourer. All right, and from there, once you do that cutscene, you're going to go back into the fairy's lab once you have the genie lamp and i think this occurs right he's going to have disappeared cleared out his mansion we'll have to come back but i believe it's going to show us something right all the fairies are gone that's not a good sign oh something's definitely happening Oh, that's creepy as hell. I'm also experiencing this for the first time uh, <laughs> as I'm showing you this guide. So, I don't know. That definitely triggered something. Now, let's see if my assumptions are correct. If we go all the way back. Nope, not yet. Future Buddha back in the building. And now that we know what we know, uh, the whole story has been finished. Took me a couple days to just grind it all out. To the point where we could come here right in the last uh, section that you just watched we watched the second cutscene now we come here to port town marquita and zlord the devourer subquest is here now the real challenge is taking this on uh, i think i'm gonna make a separate video describing at least how i beat the quest and uh, tips and strategies uh, for anyone who maybe doesn't have the exact same team I have set up so hopefully that can help some people I'll need to sit down and really jot some stuff down to make that video So for now, we're just gonna try and beat it and bully our way through it So we can show off the rewards that you get after your journey of Watching this video capturing the fairies doing what you need to do is over <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he's Lord the Heathen, bro. What a savage. Little old fart. <laughs> ah, it feels good. Let's see the rewards, baby. After getting your first clear rewards, return to the home screen and tap unit. Oh, that was intense, boy. That was a fight of the ages right there. At least for me. Granted, it's a, it's a pretty easy fight as long as you can tank the hits. But, um, man, just going in there semi-blind was not easy, but there's what we wanted to see. We got 30 of Lord Souls, which we'll use to unlock him. And we have the Sword of Lost Souls, baby. 500 HP, 250 strength, physical and special attack damage, plus 15%. And if special damage is resisted, ignore resistance so that's okay it's not as crazy as i thought it's still a crazy crazy weapon but it's not on the same level as trish this is saying if special damage and special for anyone who doesn't know is regarding your ultimate ability it's not regarding your skills trishula just makes all damage neutral the sword of lost souls just makes your ultimate or your special quote-unquote neutral so that is good to clarify but it's still a busted little thing the combo of that sword and Triss make for just a disgusting powerhouse so I can't wait to use it on either you know I could even put it on Nero and make him a monster good stuff and that is how it's done ladies and gentlemen Oh yeah, I definitely want to make a video clarifying best practices when taking on that fight because I think it's a generally easy fight if you can tank the hits, but the real goal is to get it done as quick as possible. Let's unlock this bad boy uh, with the 30 souls we got. His sprite is so cool with the spirits. There he is. 
<laughs> Craziness. Dope art. We talked about him a month ago. Was it even? Has it even been a month? Maybe. But we finally got the boy. It's a little log. A dope unit I definitely want to build out at some point just because of how unique his kit is. Um, very cool stuff. I'll worry about enhancing him later because the point of this video was to show you steps A to Z. And we did it. We got him. We got the Lord. We got the sword. And we got the fairies. So, guys. Oh, it took a minute for me to make this. Drop a like if it helped you. And, of course, drop those comments if I missed anything, any other details to note that I maybe forgot to cover because there's so much to this game. There's always something. There's always more to know whenever you're approaching certain situations. Oh, feels good. Feels like I leveled up in my last Claudia gameplay. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, you already know what I say. Work hard. Play harder. See you in the next video. We did it, baby. <laughs>